Yeah. And once again, I'd like to thank Greg Crow for getting me my early birthday present. Y'all know my yours. birthday is coming up at the end of this month on the 30th. I can't wait to get your gift, Dr. Coleman. It's going to be hard to beat that signed football from you, you too, keep, Matthew. You keep biting off a pen with, a, yeah, man, with be, your teeth. He's that is a you. very nice gift, Greg. For thank you. you. Now, y'all just saw Greg. <laughs> Jay, give me this. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> You didn't tell me, huh? you didn't hear me say you're welcome. <laughs> hey, hey, before we go much further, guys, I want to show some pictures from Wright Kubota yesterday. We stopped down there, dropped off a Sports Illustrated with yeah. Philip and Pepper. But Pepper's Here, the main star. Here's the watchdog Kubota. down at Wright Kubota. If you're ever in there, look out. He'll sound ferocious. He's bad. And there's the bad owner, Philip Wright, who can do no wrong. And here's a picture you of like one of his that customers. Name, don't you? Oh, she customers. was mopping the floor while I was in there. So, <laughs> Philip Wright, y'all need a good Kubota? Go by and visit Philip. Big Bama fan. Hey, Matthew, we'll talk a little football in just a moment. First, Greg, what do you got going on? I just got a lot Selling. of some upcoming auctions. We hadn't set the dates on them, some of state deals. We hadn't set the dates on those yet. Got a bunch of river property, other property listed <laughs> I got a bunch over. of river property, yours too, but I've got a bunch more <laughs> river property. Probably... I need to sell mine, too. <laughs> well, right now, you know, they got a big controversy going on at Bay Hill, too. Uh, hopefully, the county commissioners here will do the right thing and help everybody, provide everybody out there with what they need. Uh, sure what is your thoughts law. on that, Greg? Well, it's, you know, I can't understand why they didn't have restrictions on it when they sold it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's too late now to go, yeah. you know, we got to go beyond that. And they've already put RVs out there in some spots. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got he's got some. Mr. Wilson has got some good points too there, but you know, uh, it's just the like property said, value everybody's. Yeah, but concerned if you're about. looking for property, great location to build your dream home. Something I do want to say: all the residents there at Bay Hill, they want to say the people that live there, they love it there. Even though this is some bad publicity, it is still a beautiful place to be and they absolutely love it and they don't want the bad perception that it's terrible out there because they absolutely enjoy living out there. And so. those people live there year round. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's just not like second homes that uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it makes a lot of difference. Or third or fourth homes that some of us have out there at the time being, yes. Matthew, which I don't have one out there. Leads I don't me, know. You know, it kind of leads me into what Matthew and I are talking about we were talking about second homes third homes fourth homes we only need about one about home, right? home we only need one home right <laughs> well yeah that, that, that's all we need just the roof over our head for now so. and something matthew wants to talk about today is helping out people in need and we have a full page graphic here where we're all talking about oh two hundred dollars a month well that can sponsor four children for all of their books for a whole school year Right. I mean, they're uh, they're trying to replace books at a at a school in Haiti, mm -hmm. and um, you know the the books cost about fifty dollars per child, and those books will last them several Seven years. years. So, um, you know, mm -hmm. I think all in all, there's there's almost five hundred kids. It's over. Mm -hmm. They they need twenty three thousand dollars to do it. That's what but, they're trying uh, to raise. And um, this is a lady May who has spent twenty years of her life working in Haiti. We have some pictures here to show you, and um, you're actually going to be doing a mission trip. Tri a trip rather to dig some wells to help with the water yeah we're going to do a couple of different things down there so mm -hmm. I, th I think we're going to going to help with some wells and we're also going to going to help uh, at this school That's i think a there's church some right there mm -hmm. pictures on here of the of yeah. the school school building where they're uh and that's like one of the ditches that they'll be, they'll you know put the, put in the pipes and everything to where they can at least have running water. But there's some pictures of the children and everything. There it is, getting them all ready. And now, Matthew, is this through your church or is this just through a charitable organization that you're involved in? Well, it's it's with my brother's church. He lives okay. down in Gardendale, mm -hmm. and um, and so his church down there. They went down right after the uh, earthquake um, back in January. They that were down there in February. Now, there's so. a big deal that the, uh, the, the Haitians have only received, what, 10% of the total billions of dollars that the government's donated? That's why you have to go through local chapters, I guess you can call them, like what you're doing. It, it seems anytime there's a, a problem, Major. you know, it takes, uh, there, there's always loopholes to get through. There's things to jump through. And so, and so that's what we're trying to do is actually take it down there and, and you know, just you know, do what we can, you know, help them build, build onto their church and their mm -hmm. school and, and get fresh water to their community. I mean, there's um, 26,000 people die a day just because they don't have Ooh, clean water wow. to drink. So, I um, mean, just in the hour that we're, we're doing this show, it'll be over, you know, over a thousand people will die just for lack of water. So, so you're going down uh -huh. in October or September? September. September 25th. So, unfortunately, I would My not be able to make birthday. that trip, Matthew. But, uh, but we're working on catch me, catch me out, outside of football season. Oh. I'll ask you again. So spring. that's why he'll be donating some money for some books. He's going to buy 
$23,000 worth of school books. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, I'm glad to hear him. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Just because so, you gave him that football, Let's Greg. talk about something else this morning. In USA Today this morning, and you can enlighten us on this right here. There's a ban. Uh, San Francisco is the first country to do I mean, first country. First, uh, They might ought to be another country after what's happening out there this week. But uh, it says, ban toys at an unhealthy kids' meal. A serious move is afoot to... Force fast food giants to make kids' meals more nutritionally viable if they want to sell them to kid-luring toys. In San Francisco, news proposed legislation would ban toys from most kids' meals sold at McDonald's, Burger King's, and other chains unless the meals meet more stringent calorie and sodium limits. They're saying that the only reason kid you can't sell to, the only way you can sell to a kid is to lure them with a toy. Kids' meals rank among mm. fast food's biggest sales. Although kids' mail sales are declining because budget-minded parents opt for dollar menu items instead. Now, y'all do a, y'all do some of that every now and then. We do. I mean, we have some toys. Like we just had the the cows, you know, plastic cows where you could you could decorate in our kids' meals. You know, a lot of our kids' meal toys, if you will, are, are educational items. They're they're books. They're um, uh, just have facts about the the U.S. and other countries. And and so you know, we have lots of educational. And with our kids' meals, you have you have options. Um, you know, fries. You know, if, if the kid or the parent want that, but I mean, that's they're just, not talking about Chick Fil A. So well, and that it depends on. So what how about they dogging out your well, competitor, Matthew? You come on, get on McDonald's, person. jump on Burger King, both feet, Matthew. So. This is your chance to shine. <laughs> Tell them how fattening their food is to kids, huh? Come on. You just know you have a healthy menu, don't you? Right. We've got options. I mean, they can choose milk and, and juice for their drinks, and we've got, you know, fruit apple for a side apple item. Apple so. juice. Mm-hmm. So uh, what is the real reason kids are uh, not eating healthy? It ain't parents, the kid's fault. Parents? It's, I mean, parents have a choice when they go somewhere and what their, their kids eat. I mean, you I know, when we take our them. kids, we've got choices in what they eat. I mean, we can get them fries and, you know, things, or we can get them fruit. So, uh, okay. But, uh, when do parents take responsibility? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I, Let me give y'all some advice. You ever go there around lunchtime? Try to sit away from the kid area. Most of the time, they're there. With yeah, unless you got kids with you. <laughs> All right, let me. Ch- while area. we're on the subject of weight, got this one article, and then we'll turn it over to the Coleman Dental Group here. Americans are starting to tell the truth about what they actually eat and weigh. Hmm. Said some people could be lying about their weight. Most people no. always. Greg, I'll ask you a question. <laughs> Go ahead. How tall are you? Six foot. Six foot. I'm going to measure him. I'm 5'11". It says the biggest thing that people say is they're taller than they really are. Really? Anybody got tape? Yes, we have one in the back. Lee, you say you're six feet? And you're not. Oh, yeah, you, okay, I think you're two inches shorter than me. <laughs> huh? Okay, Thanks, I'm six. Brad. Okay, all of a sudden I think I'm six three. <laughs> But this is what the article says. Experts believe 27% is probably an underestimate of people saying that uh, obesity rate is right. They're saying <laughs> obesity is raised to almost 30%. They say that's an underestimate. We'll see if we're taller. But and most we people are starting to come bad. clean about their weight. Hmm. I weigh 175. <laughs> huh? I didn't Wake say up. No, I'm, I'm 6'3", 175. <laughs> I'm, I'm Patrick English. How's that? <laughs> what do you think? Is that, that not right? Guessing, Matthew, Matthew with my fine physique, right. how much would you say I weigh? Uh, one eighty-five. Matthew, there, Matthew. Matthew. I'll like be eating you. more chicken before you know it. <laughs> one ninety. Close. Give or take a few One ninety. Don't worry, Greg. I'm not going to embarrass you and ask you. You already told me you're six feet. We're going to measure you in a okay. minute. <laughs> Thanks for the football. Look, look, jump up. Come on, Frank. Greg, stand up. I'm not scared <laughs> about it. Frank, measure, Frank, measure. <laughs> Take your mic off. What has this become? <laughs> 30 minutes. Not his girth, his height. <laughs> and Lee, you're next. Step on the step on the tape, Greg. <laughs> Stand up straight, shoulders back. I thought he was Frank. Frank. Six one. You see, we're gonna you shoes. Hey, wait, you were in platform shoes this morning. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Six. I'm gonna run camera. Measure Lee. Lee, get over there. Oh, poor Lee. No, Come know. here, Lee. <laughs> get over there, Lee. <laughs> All right, run camera. You better not be lying to me. <laughs> huh? You got any scales in here? Let's see about that 185. <laughs> 190. <laughs> Frank, yeah. our show. Stand up straight, Lee. All right. Ah. 
six feet. Okay, Frank, you could have lied a little bit here, and I could have more fun with this segment. He's got shoes on that makes him five eleven. He's wearing heels. We got to take a break. We'll be right back in just a moment. Coleman's about to take over. Y'all hang on.